Hi guys, it's Kelly Latabola here and I'm back with another video for Honey Bee Stamps. Today I'm going to be using the In Bloom set, the stamps and dies. Before I get too far into the video, I do want to let you know that Honey Bee is having a sale um, for July 3rd and 4th. It is 15% off. It will automatically be added and that includes clearance and any bundle deals. If you spend over $100, you also get a Stars and Stripes stencil um, for free as long as supplies last. So just so you're aware of that, in case there was something that you had your heart set on that you wanted to um, pick up. So here I'm working on watercolor paper. This is the, this isn't my go-to. I kind of bought this um, just to try out. This is the Strathmore Ready Cut watercolor paper. Um, it doesn't really say, honestly, if it's hot or cold press, um, but it's like it's already cut to five by seven so it kind of is super easy to just pull out and use and I seem to be getting fairly good results with it. I'm using the Hero Arts black dye ink. This is um, waterproof so um, I haven't had any issues using it and then once everything is dry doing my Copics over it I haven't had any smearing with it even though it's not a Copic safe ink. I don't know if there's just something in the watercolor or the drying process that kind of negates that, not really sure. Um, if you're worried about it, since we are going to be doing Copic coloring, then just use a Copic Safe Black ink. So I stamped this down and then um, I'm watercoloring with some Distress Oxides today. So these are kind of the colors I'm going with. I wanted just a really soft kind of pretty background. It's been a while since I've done a card like this where I've combined the two um, and I'm working on my Waffle Flower uh, watercolor media mat and I'm just going to take the pads, scribble out a little bit of color, and then use this as my palette. Um, you can do this on an acrylic block if you don't have a mat or uh, the Ranger Craft mat it also works. I used that for years. Uh, I just really like the white look of this. So here I'm just putting down clean water. I'm using a number eight round brush from the Silver Brush Company and your water is going to, or your color is going to go anywhere that it's wet. So don't put water that anywhere you don't want pigment. Um, so I'm just giving myself a good kind of halo around this image of lots of water since I do want it to be um, a little bit more pale. And then I'm just going to start dropping in the color um, pretty much wherever I want. My game plan usually is to try to get three areas of color um, of the same color that are all not right next to each other. And I do try to be conscientious about what colors I'm putting next to each other. Um, like I know if I put a yellow and a blue next to each other, I'm going to get a green. Um, or if I put a uh, pink and a blue next to each other, I'm going to get a purple. So if you have limited um, Distress Ink colors, that can really work to your benefit. Because um, then you can mix, kind of mix your own colors if you don't own a purple, but you're trying to get one. Um, I didn't really pay too much attention as far as to like what color the flowers were going to be because I knew... Um, me coloring over them with the Copics, you wouldn't um, necessarily see all of that. It would be more of an undertone, which really is the purpose of this. Is, um, you know, it easily allows you to kind of combine colors um, and get a different look, a different variation. It's not super pretty right now, but it really never is when it's wet. So I am going to go in with a paper towel and blot up some of the um, extra water on the edges where the color is pooling to, um, just because I wanted my edges to be a little bit softer. You certainly could leave this here and let it dry. I just didn't want necessarily harsh color on the outside edges. This is a 5 by 7 so it's obviously much bigger than um, my finished card. So I know that I'm going to be cutting off portions of this and I didn't want my color to necessarily go all the way out to the edges. I'm going to go back in with a second layer of color just because I did want them to be a little bit more bold than this. Watercolors, when they dry, dry much lighter. Um, so while this is perfect for me looking at it right now, I know when it dries it's going to be lighter than I want it to be. Um, and then it also gives me uh, another opportunity to kind of play with the color and get more or less of something. 
So my purple had pretty much taken over my pink. So I'm adding quite a bit of that back in, um, you know, as well as adding that a little bit to the oranges or the yellows because I like how it makes that orange corally color. Um, and then like that's for the painting, that's pretty much it. It's just dropping in color and then letting the water do the work. That's how I find that I like my watercolor the best. Um, I struggle with enjoying watercolor when I continuously work the color it becomes very flat and I'm not happy with it. So here everything is dry and then what I'm going to do is the dyes that match this. Um, oh no we're going to color first. I'm lying to you. To be honest it was so long ago that I made this card. <laughs> so long ago that I made this card because as I told you guys recently I'm kind of struggling with voiceovers. Um, and not really knowing what to say or what to talk about. And all of you were wonderful and very reassuring that, you know, I could redo an ingredient list and you'd be happy with it. I'm not trying to actually redo an ingredient list. Um, but so going into the coloring, I have not had any issues with my Copex coloring over just regular Distress Ink or Distress Oxides. Um, originally I grabbed an RV06 and didn't realize it because all my markers were kind of just spread out on my desk. What I actually want is an RV04. That's what I want my... Um, one of my mid-tones to be. And then I'm just coloring this the way that I always do, which is lightest to darkest, and then darkest back out to lightest to try to get um, some depth uh, in the flowers. And I think that um, they just look so pretty when you have these bold flowers comparative to this super soft background. Um, they don't compete with each other. They complement each other really well. And uh, it's one of my more favorite techniques. This is not for everybody though because some people don't like the messy background, which is fine. You certainly could make that background much cleaner than I did. Um, you know, you could do it in a shape or you, you know, like a, a you can mask to do a square or a circle or any of those things. Um, I just like when it's very um, organic. And then um, I'm on out here to my last color and I'll just do that on the edges so that there is some separation of the petals and then uh, move on to the next one. I tried to show you each color combination, but I didn't necessarily show you the coloring of every single flower, um, just because it didn't feel very necessary. So as far as life goes, um, pretty much just, you know, working and working around the house. Um, we are picking up lots of DIY projects. Um, I'm still, you know, just days away from finishing that dining room table. It's just the project that keeps on giving. Um, I put the last top coat on last night and then I have to buff that out with a brown paper bag, which I thought was interesting. But apparently that's comparative to like a thousand or, or um, 1200 grit sandpaper. So they recommend that you use that for your final one. Um, and then we, Nathan and I reupholstered the seats um, at the end of last week really love the way they came out. It's like a sagey green um, with little diamond check patterns. Don't worry, I will have I will have pictures at some point on my blog so that you guys can see since you've been listening to this. Um, so we have that going on and we also made a runner. I was originally going to sew it. Um, I was just going to use like the, it's called Heat Bond or, or the other brand is I think Stitch Witchery where, you know, it's just the iron on glue. Um, I was originally going to do that just to hold it in place so I could sew the runner, uh, but actually the heat bond seems to be working really well this time, so I'm just gonna leave it as is. I made two. I made a cream colored one um, a little bit wider, um, and then I made one in that same green fabric um, a little bit longer. Now here's the mistake I made, because <laughs> I was doing the runners first, I should have covered the chairs first, um, since those were the most important ones. But I didn't. I measured out the runners and did those first. And then when I went to go cover the chairs in the green fabric, I was scared. I was not going to have enough. So there is one a chair. Like, I even do this in my real life. I tell you guys this in card making all the time. Like, you know, just adapt and make it work. And um, so I, there's one chair that is pieced together like Christmas wrapping paper. Um, because I didn't have a wide enough piece to cover it completely. So what I ended up doing was taking a small piece um, and using the heat bond to adhere it to my larger piece 
so that I could wrap it around and staple it. There is a seam showing, but it is on the very back of the chair, like the seat that fits up next to the chair, so you cannot see it at all. So nobody else would know that I pieced it together, but yeah, I totally had, <laughs> totally had to piece it together. Um, just because I did that, I chose to do the runner first, and you know I'm cheap, I'm so cheap. Um, I bought that fabric on clearance, and I bought it at the beginning, because this project has been going on now, um, March, April, May, June, here we are, I'll finish it in July, so like a four month project. Um, and I was like, I'll never be able to find this fabric again. Like it was in the clearance section back in March, for sure it's gone. Um, <laughs> so I did find a way to make it work, thank God. Um, it worked out, you weren't able to see it, and it's only just that one uh, chair. So here all of the coloring is, is done. I'm gonna go ahead and stamp my sentiment, which is part of the same set. It's made to fit into um, this cute little geometric shape. I totally love this stamp set. I think it's super pretty, uh, but you know I'm a sucker for florals. So this um, is gonna be a thank you card, and I'm using that same Hero Arts um, ink. It's great for sentiment stamping, and it just says thank you for your kindness. Um, these are great to have on hand for any, you know, kind of thank you cards that you need to send out, but there's other sentiments in there um, that you can use for, for different things. So now that this is stamped, I am going to put the um, die in place. Now the die comes with the uh, geometric shape attached to the flowers. You can cut them apart. I chose not to. I chose to just leave them together line them up accordingly, um, and then tape them in place. I will tell you that when I do die cut, um, I have just a plain white piece of cardstock that I put over the top that will just protect my card so that I don't get anything on there um, that I don't want. So here is the outside ring. This is all cut down to the appropriate card size A2 card. And um, so I glued that down, and then I'm going to... Um, pop up the center. This did, I didn't line this up great. You can see that. Like you can see where it's not lined up perfect. Um, I, I had it too far up to the top, um, but that's okay. Like things happen. So here um, I'm going to, originally I was going to put the flowers at one level of foam tape and then put the center up two levels of foam tape, but because I cut it wrong, I decided just to tape them together and then I'm going to cover this whole piece here with just one layer of foam tape. So it still does have some dimension, but it isn't anything, um, it isn't necessarily the way that I was going for it in the first place, but that's okay. I'm still happy with the card. Um, still happy with the way the watercolor came out and the, the coloring. And to me, that's really the most important part. So I'm just going to fit this back in like a puzzle piece. It's just going to be slightly raised. I'll still have the continuity of that watercolor in the center and then on the outside but the bold pop of color for the flowers. I'm using um, clear glitter gloss. It kind of got away from me. I squeezed it a little bit too much, I think, and it kind of got away from me on that left-hand side, but that's okay. It just means more shimmer, and I'm fine with it. Um, and then that's it. That's the whole card. You can see the shimmer there here in the still. Um, so make sure you guys check out that honeybee sale, like I said, July 3rd and 4th, and um, that's it. Thank you guys so much for joining me, and I'll catch you on the next video. Bye.